Hi, this is Corey from SAS Pegasus, and today I want to show you how to build an interactive chat GPT clone using Django, Channels, and HTMX. So here's a demo of what we're building. Uh, it's a very basic chat GPT interface, but what you can see is that, first of all, it's streaming. So you'll see as it types, it will stream responses to me. So maybe if I make a long one, you can see it's going as we go. It also, you'll notice, has history. So it knew I wanted a poem. I could ask follow-up questions. And yeah, so basically this is a very simple chat GPT clone. And we're going to get into how it's made one step at a time. So these are the list of steps that we'll take. And I'm gonna go through these steps one at a time. The first one being the UI scaffolding. So here's the basic UI scaffolding. This is where we just set up our chat URL, our chat view, and our chat template. Let's check out this commit and see what it does. So if we refresh the page now, we can see we just have a basic completely unfunctional chat UI. So the main thing of interest here is the template, which you see just updated. And basically we have a wrapper. These, these CSS classes are just the CSS classes that ship in Pegasus. So that's, that's what's adding the styling. But basically you can see we have a message list. We, inside that message list, we're rendering a single system message with our system icon. That's this little guy. And what can I help you with today? And then at the bottom, we have our input bar, which is a very basic form. Type your message, send. So this doesn't do anything. And now we're going to see how to wire it up to add the chat app. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add the WebSocket consumer demo application. So again, you can see this diff is pretty simple. We're adding a new route to our WebSocket configuration. And we're adding a very basic consumer that's just gonna grab the user, reject it if the user isn't authenticated. And whenever it receives a message, it'll just print that out to the console. This is a purely backend only commit, so I won't really be able to demo anything. So I'm actually gonna check out the next commit, which adds the WebSocket scaffolding to our front end. So let's take a look at what this does. We're using the HTMX WebSockets extension, which we've just included from Unpackage in our page head. And then we've added these two attributes. The HXEST equals WS is just how you use the extension. And then WS Connect tells it where to connect. In this case, we're connecting to this WS AI demo route that we've added. Then in our form, we've added this WS Send attribute. This WSN tells the app that every time the form is submitted, send it via the WebSocket. So let's check out this commit, see what it does. Okay, so now we're back and we're gonna type, hello, are you there? So. Nothing is happening in our front end, but if we go to our server output, you can see that those printouts are now getting printed out here. And you can see HTMX provides some headers and stuff, and then this message field, which is showing the content that we've been typing in. So far, so good. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna show the user some feedback about the message they just sent in. So let's look at how that works. First, we're gonna parse that message as JSON. We're gonna pull out that message field. We'll check if it's empty, and if it's empty, we won't do anything. If it's not empty, we'll use Django's render to string to show the message in this little component here, and then we'll send that over the wire. The key thing about this functionality is this hx swap OOB before end and this div ID message list. And what this tells our app is to insert this right before the end of our message list component. 
So here's the message list component. Those messages will get inserted at the end. So right after this system message. Let's check out this commit and see how it works. Okay, so now you can see when I type, these messages pop right back up, giving me some nice feedback there. One thing that's annoying is this bar isn't getting cleared every time I submit a message. So let's fix that. So now we're gonna use the after send event, which comes with HTMX WebSocket support. And we're just going to grab that input idea and set its value to empty. So when I refresh the page here, now that message is getting cleared. Next, we're going to apply a similar strategy, but instead of showing the user feedback, we're going to add an empty system message. So let's look at that. Once again, pretty straightforward. We're generating a random message ID and using that to create a div ID for where we're going to put the contents. And I'll explain why we're doing that in a little bit. Then we use a similar strategy to render our system message template, sticking that div ID in and sending it back over the wire. I didn't include it in this commit because it was already in my project, but let's take a look at that system message template. And you can see we're applying the same strategy. We're using this message list div. We're swapping it before the end and we're adding the system icon sticking the ID in there and adding this class called add loading dots. And I'll show you that in a sec as well. So let's check out this commit. So you can see the system message is now getting stuck there. And we have these little loading dots, which are being added by this class. We can quickly look at the CSS for that if you'd like. To be honest, I don't really understand how this works. I copied and pasted it somewhere from the internet, but basically it adds some dots. They kind of get more and more dark in some sort of rotating fashion, and it looks like a nice little loading indicator. All right, now for the good stuff adding ChatGPT. So this is all it takes to add ChatGPT into this app. We're going to initialize our OpenAI clients. We're going to call the chat completions API with this message. Crucially, we're going to pass stream equals true, which tells OpenAI to send us a streaming response instead of a regular response. And then we're going to iterate through that streaming response. And for each chunk, we're going to grab the content. We are going to append it to our list of chunks for later. And then we're going to swap it in with HTMX. And so here is where we're using this div ID that we set up earlier. And the reason for that is because it's getting inserted into this ID here, which is where our message contents are right inside where these three dots are. And so that's where every little bit of text coming from ChatGPT is gonna go. Let's see the demo. Aha, nice streaming responses. So there are a couple small problems with this. The first one I notice is that these loading dots are still here, even after it's finished. So let's fix that. The way we're going to fix this is by adding a final message after we've streamed the entire response. The message content is going to be 
the join chunks that we got from OpenAI, so the entire message. And the template that we're going to use, you'll now see is using hxswap oob equals true, which means instead of appending it to the end, it will overwrite the whole thing. And what that means is it will also remove the loading dots class, which is causing that thing to be rendered. So the loading dots is here, but not here. Just for fun, let's make sure that works. Great, no more dots. However, there's still a problem. Let's try asking it some follow-up questions. So you can see it's totally confused. I was trying to tell it I wanted some Asian food, but it doesn't remember that, and so now it's just telling me about the word Asian. So we need to add some history to this. Let's look at how that's done. So now in our consumer, we are going to maintain a list of messages. In the beginning, we're going to add the user's first message to that list. And then in our call to OpenAI, we'll pass that list of messages that we're keeping on the consumer class. Then after we get our system message back, we also add it to the list of messages as a system message. Now our consumer will maintain this list of messages for the lifecycle of the WebSocket connection, and we can get nice history. So let's see it in action. There we go. I'm thinking I want some pod thai. However, we just noticed one last little bug, which is that really we want this thing to scroll to the end of the list. So let's add that last little bit. We can use the HTMX after message events to do this. This event will be called every time we get a message from our WebSocket and we can scroll now to the bottom of the chat. So let's add this last commit, see how it looks. Now we can see it scrolling nicely as this message is come through. So that is all it takes to build a streaming chat GPT clone with HTMX channels, WebSockets, Django, all that good stuff. I'll be shipping a demo of this in the latest SAS Pegasus release. Should be out this week. The Pegasus demo is a more fully featured example on top of this. It includes saving all your chats to the database for each user, dynamically updating your URLs so that when you refresh the page, it loads your correct chat and a few other little details that improve upon this. But this is basically the bones. So I hope that's been useful and I will see you next time.